This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app, outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. One of the most iconic states for hunters to visit is Montana. The diverse landscape ranges from rugged mountains to rolling prairie and everything in between. The state has elk, mule deer, whitetail, pronghorn antelope, and just about every other species of big game animal and predator. This year, I'd drawn a non-resident elk and deer combination license, and my plan was to do some research and book myself on a couple of hunts with Dipfern Operations with the hopes of meeting some good people and quality operations so that we'd have more hunts to offer our clients here at Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Now, the license is relatively easy to obtain through the draw. Our office staff takes care of all of the applications for both myself and our clients, so I wasn't surprised when I got the notification that I'd drawn the license and got them in the mail, and I was able to start making some plans and looking forward to the coming hunting season. I had targeted the Crazy Mountains region of Montana, just north of I-90 and east of Bozeman as an area of great interest. The private lands on the southern end of the Crazy Mountains near Livingston have exceptional numbers of elk, as well as good populations of both mule deer and whitetail. I did my research, scheduled my hunt for mid-November, and when the time came, we packed up our gear, loaded the truck, and hit the road for Montana. First morning of the hunt, we're gonna go up high and glass the entire property, or as much of it as we could possibly see. A lot of long range reconnaissance here. Um, driving in this morning, you know, one of the things about mid-November is these mule deer and whitetail are rutting right now or they're just starting to rut real well. So we're cautious to be looking for deer on the drive, maybe even catch a herd of elk moving uh, from feeding to bedding areas. So they go out in these big open, you know, sagebrush flats and there's a lot of like mountain grass and stuff and there's a lot for them to eat out there. But as soon as the sun comes up, they want to get in the cedars get in there, get bedded up, and, and just disappear for the day. And that's why we're gonna get up high in glass. See if we can catch some elk in the pockets, find a good bull, maybe catch a good buck. We've got deer and elk tags, anything could happen today. It's a good sign when you're driving to your hunting area and spot elk right away. And it's an even better sign when there's a nice six by six bull. We thought that he was feeding over the hill with the cows. But then that bull reversed direction and ran down into a timbered canyon, which changed our plans. As we drove up the road to get on the ridge top, our travel was interrupted yet again, this time when we spotted a mule deer buck rutting some does. A reminder that I had a combo license in my pocket, but this buck wasn't nearly big enough, so we moved on. Our guide, Richie, knows the ranch like the back of his hand. And he wanted to get up on the ridge above the bull that we had seen run into the timber. We parked the trucks and walked out to glass the pockets. The wind was picking up, the snow was blowing, and this bull was holding tight in the dense timber. It was a great plan, but it was also time to move on. back out here for the evening hunt. Got the guys in front of us here. We're making our way up to a glassing point where we can look back and see where we left some elk bedded this morning. They were pretty brushed up. We couldn't see what was in there. Rather than going and risk blowing them out by getting closer, we're gonna stay back a distance, let them come out to us. Hopefully there'll be a nice bull in there. like a three and a half year old that should be a six by now. Yeah. If you look at his body, he's got like a really, oh, I'm on the one to the left, just its backbone. Yeah, 
Yeah, those are the ones going that way, aren't they? Yeah, the ones that went by the your new cabin site. There's a whole bunch of elk on top of the vista. We were, you can see five or six of them from glassing down below. We moved up and further away, get a better angle on it. Look at some more of these drainages up here. There's even more elk just piling up out of there. It's pretty cool. Uh, just the two bolts up there. One of them's just a nice five by five. The other one's a two by two. So there's three, four of those down. Yeah, and there's one buck. Two head gear on. Overall, it was an awesome day. We were hunting in beautiful terrain. We saw some deer and got some elk action and I couldn't have asked for more. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles. A passion for precision. Every barrel, every rifle. This outfitter has multiple properties in close proximity to each other. And because my ultimate goal was to experience every aspect of the operations, early the next morning we left in the dark for the short drive to the other ranch. We met up with the ranch manager, who also doubles as a guide, and took side-by-sides out onto the ranch. daylight slowly revealed thousands of acres of pristine rolling foothills that slowly rise into the timbered mountains at the top of the property. The game was to glass the foothills looking for the herds of elk that were feeding their way back up to bed in the timber for the day. The idea was to either catch them low enough to intercept before they made the timber line or see where they went in and make a plan for the evening to ambush them when they came back out to feed. with a bull in them. Got a bunch of elk. That's a good bunch there. I like it when they're late. Yeah, I got him in the, I got him in the glass, Richie. With elk already entering the timber, we planned an evening ambush and drove the side-by-sides to the eastern portion of the ranch and into a canyon where the mule deer gather during the rut. It's mid-November and the rut is definitely getting started. As we drive down the canyon, we stop to glass several small bucks, and not surprisingly, we spot our large herd of elk tucked into a draw just out of the wind. The spotting scope revealed a lot of cows and calves and one small six by five. Nothing that I wanted to shoot on the first day, so we headed in for lunch and started to plan our evening hunt. The elk all went up in the timber up here earlier today. How about a half mile above us, three quarters mile maybe. We're waiting for them to feed back out tonight. We're gonna set up just over the top of this hill and down in the draw, get out of the wind. If the elk will feed down in front of us, we ought to be set up for a shot. If not, we should at least be able to see where they're going to try and get out in front of them. Go catch up to the boys. Try and get down out of the wind underneath these trees so we can glass this canyon. It's ripping here. We spotted the elk starting to come out of the timber, just where the guides thought they would come out. And with location verified, we took the side-by-sides to a spot where we could hike out and get in front of the feeding elk.
Ed just peeked over the top up here and looked, there's a whole bunch of elk in the bottom of this next draw. There's a lot of them. We watched what looked to be a couple hundred of them go in there this morning. Hopefully there's a couple of nice bulls in there. We can get a look at one of them, so lead the way. With the wind in our favor and a light snow falling, we slip in and get the drop on the elk. They are all around us, with only one small bull and several cows feeding below us. There were just too many elk scattered throughout the area to see them all. And with elk starting to feed up behind us and unable to get eyes on any of the bigger bulls, we slipped out of there before we got winded, leaving them to feed and with the plan to return tomorrow. Another incredible day of hunting was in the books. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. The next morning, we headed back up the mountain, straight into the teeth of a storm. The forecast was for 50 mile an hour winds, and the weatherman didn't disappoint. With snow drifting over food sources, Richie and Ed decided that we should check out a field near the timberline, and sure enough, a small herd of elk was there pawing at the snow, trying to access the feed. With only smaller bulls in the herd, we moved to a spot where we could glass into some pockets where the elk might be feeding out of the wind. But it wasn't long before the wind started to exceed 50 miles an hour, and the conditions were unbearable on the mountain. So we decided to take the side-by-sides down to the canyon and see if there were any elk and deer feeding out of the wind. Uh, the wind blew hard this week. It blew really hard. We had gusts of 50 and up to 60 miles an hour. I mean, we had a constant 20, but up on the top of those ridge tops when it was ripping, you got some 50 and 60 mile gusts for sure. We had decided to take the side-by-sides down to the canyon and see if there were any elk and deer feeding out of the wind under the protection of the canyon walls. We had no sooner hit the creek bottom and Richie spotted a deer carcass or what was left of it. Tracks revealed a mountain lion had killed this buck. We had not seen it the day before, so it was less than 24 hours old. And a pack of coyotes had claimed the kill site and cleaned up the carcass. Proof that nature is incredibly efficient. As we headed out of the canyon with plans of eating an early lunch, we rounded the corner in the road and we were shocked to see a six by six bull elk and when he didn't run, we all knew that something was wrong. As he eased off of the road, we could see that he had an issue with his back end. He wasn't the massive bull elk that this area was well known to produce, but with the weather conditions forecast to worsen and an obviously sick or injured bull elk in front of me, the decision was simple. I was going to take this elk. Steve.
How's that work out? Wind blowing 50 up top. Looking for 250 head of help down here in the bottom. And we find one. Just drive around the corner and he's like right there. I'd be bow range of the front of the buggy. Unbelievable. Now if a 200 inch buck jumps up, I'll be, come on guys, it's a buck. He was a nice six by six. A lot of hunters dream about getting an elk of this size, and I was proud to have him. Furthermore, our suspicions were confirmed. Upon recovery, we realized that the bull was indeed wounded. Three weeks earlier, on the opening day of the general rifle elk season, a hunter on neighboring public lands shot and wounded a six by six bull that jumped the fence. The hunter reached out to Ed and was granted permission to cross onto the property and try and recover the elk. When he was speaking with Ed, he explained that his second shot had wounded the bull going away from him, which confirmed our suspicion that this was likely the same bull. Given that this elk would not have survived the winter, I was even happier to have taken him instead of another healthy bull that would return next year to this incredible landscape. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide App. Outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped, ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. For this hunt, I wanted to carry a rifle that was chambered in a caliber that would generate enough energy to knock down an elk, but also flexible enough so that I could shoot extended distances. For that reason, I chose to hunt with the Bergara Premier Series Highlander. Chambered in 300 PRC and topped with the Burris XTR3 rifle scope, the rifle is shooting 220 grain custom hand-loaded Pendleton ammunition and outfitted with a suppressor. To me, this is a great combination of rifle, scope, and ammunition, as well as suppressor for Western big game hunting. This rifle is extremely accurate, and I feel very confident in its accuracy well beyond any ethical shot distance on big game. And I'm pretty sure that my guide was impressed with the rifle as well. Uh, so this week, uh, Steve brought out a really, really nice piece of equipment. He brought out that Bruguera rifle with the Burris scope, and I got an opportunity to shoot it, and um, the clarity on that scope was amazing. Um, the suppressor on the front of it, uh, I got a chance to shoot it, and it was really nice in how quiet it was. Um, and then it really cut back on the recoil, which uh, I think, you know, uh, assisted him in making those really precise shots. This segment of Checking Zero was sponsored by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. With my elk tag punched and a few days left in Montana, we headed out to deer hunt. It's mid-November. The mule deer and whitetail are both in the peak of the rut, and it's just a matter of time before we find a big buck cruising for does. On well, the mule deer hunt, we were um, driving down the road, and of course, wind was a factor. Those knew those deer were going to be in the bottoms, and uh, actually, uh, Steve and I were just talking about a couple of does that were just on the side of the hill, and then I spotted that nice buck off to the right there. Just before dark, we spotted a mule deer buck. He had just chased a doe into an opening, and while she ran into the brush, he froze when he saw us, almost as if he thought we couldn't see him. He was wrong. Yep. Oh. 
perfect. That's a nice big buck, man. <laughs> you got that luck. I don't this know is a do. Saturday luck or something. You know? like a real nice heavy buck. I mean, when we looked at him across the draw here, he just looked perfect. Exactly what I was looking for, a nice big mature buck. And, you know, here they don't get super wide. They're typically that nice big, heavy and tall genetic, nice forks. Give them a 300 PRC, 220 gram pill, they don't go far. Nope. Uh, What an incredible way to end an amazing day of hunting here in Montana. To get the buck tonight after taking an amazing six by six bull this morning. Just the culmination of a great hunt. With all my tags filled, my time is done here. It's just the, the cap to an incredible experience here in Montana. This nice buck was a cap to an incredible hunt and I'm excited to now have this Montana hunting destination available for a limited number of our clients each fall. In fact, if you'd like to book this hunt or any other big game hunting or fishing adventure, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show, but please remember to join us again next week when we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures.